All right, well, I'm not sure exactly what interrupted um, my broadcast a minute ago because I am supposed to be on my hotspot, but now it's green, which means that, uh, but sadly, that severed the connection to my last broadcast. So now the episode is cut into two, two pieces. I'm going to go ahead and uh, transfer over some of the metadata and make some minor adjustments, and I'll be right back. Sorry about this, everybody. Hang tight. Okay, I think I have everything put together correctly for the broadcast. So now let me go through as many of these super chats as I can from the last broadcast, and then I'm going to try and get back to the new broadcast. Let's see, where were we? Haystacks Plays says, Hey, Ox, my friend really changed once she became a vegetarian. It's like I've never seen her before. I mean, that one is self-explanatory, Haystacks plays. Thank you for that. Mr. Virus says, growing old is mandatory. Growing up is optional. That also is true. So many people have refused to grow up as they age. Julian Z says, great explanation, Ox. It's okay. I think, I still think you have excellent prestige. In the Fallout community, you've definitely covered more endings in the games than I have played. I just don't have the heart to play evil. I don't blame you. Uh, because prestige. That's that's why I play these games. It, this is why I'm doing it. Gotta get that prestige. Deuteronomist says, Poor Ox, you give a guy Mountain Dew and chicken nuggies. And just when you think Stockholm's syndrome sets in, he escapes and the lag starts to set in. You know, I thought that the Mountain Dew was going to be enough, but clearly, I mean, no, I don't have a Comcast technician stuck in my closet. Those are lies. Greg says, internet issues aside, what are your thoughts on your new lightsaber stance now that you've had some time to sleep on it? I'm a little disappointed by it. I'm sad that the blaster is an entirely different stance because it means that many of the things that I've specced into that you should be able to do with a single lightsaber, I lose, that you can no longer do. And the benefit of the blaster isn't there. Like there's... Now, I haven't really specced much into it, so maybe I just need to put a bunch of points into the blaster for it to really make a lot of sense. But at the moment, considering it's something that I have to recharge by using my lightsaber, makes it less useful than another stance where I don't have to recharge anything. I can use absolutely everything if I'm in that stance. Um, but maybe I just need to play with it a little bit more. Nuka Tom says, get the cattle prod. Mr. Comcast seems to be getting tired. All right, I'll try to get that cattle prod ready. Avi Rose says, can't you go into the closet and smack the Comcast guy? It's tempting. It's tempting. Well, no, I couldn't because he's not. He's not in my closet. I mean, he may be in the closet, but he's not in my closet. 
And that's what we're talking about. All right, those are the Super Chats from the last broadcast. Let me get up the new one real quick. Part two. There we go. Now, I don't know if, uh, I think, I think on Facebook it didn't disconnect, so I think I'm still able to see everybody on Facebook. Yeah, Jessica says, uh, no, Toby says that he had to reload Facebook. Looks like I can still see all of your chats. That's great. Alicia Wolf says, hello, Oxhorn. Hope you're enjoying your night. Thank you so much, Alicia Wolf. Uh, Jessica says, hey, Ox, is there any place in Seattle I can move to there? My niece has her driver's license. Don't want to be ran over by her. Uh, Seattle is, is difficult. Uh, Seattle is becoming like San Francisco or Los Angeles in many regards in terms of housing affordability. It's just really expensive to live in downtown Seattle. So many people are moving to the east side um, where, you know, Redmond still has places that are kind of affordable, but even it is getting pretty expensive. Bellevue is pretty expensive, but not nearly as bad as Seattle. It depends on where you want to go. Um, there are plenty of places within 30 to 40 minutes drive of Seattle that have affordable rents, but if you want to live in downtown Seattle, it's just going to be super expensive. And that's just the way of it. Nuka Tom says he lives. Huzzah. Thank you, Nuka Tom. And then Marine98 with a very generous super tip says, Don't worry, Ox. You will always be my guinea pig for games, just like you'll be my guinea pig for Starfield. I'll watch you to see if I would like the game first before buying the game. Loved Mad Max and Resident Evil 4. You save me from Fallout 76. Well, I'm sad that you didn't enjoy Fallout 76. Despite its problems, I still really enjoyed it, especially the pre-Wastelanders version of uh, Fallout 76. Um, but I completely recognize that it's not everyone's cup of tea. Dalton Williams says, I say this as a joke and not to bother you, uh, but no number on this Scotch and Smoke Rings. Lol, love your content, Ox. Yeah, you know, I, I've stopped numbering them a while ago, and it looks like people really miss the numbers for some reason, so I need to go back and fix them. I can't start with this one, though, right? Because I don't know where I'm at with the numbers. So in order to fix this problem, I'd have to go all the way back to when I stopped numbering them and renumber them, which is just a pain. But maybe I should do it. Should I make that my priority? I mean, I'm busy making content. Should I make numbering my episodes of Scotch and Smoke Rings my priority? I don't know. Maybe let me know. Mobius Uruburus says, Hey, Ox, it's not my intention to rush you. And I don't mean to seem impatient. But if I go another week without seeing the next video on the full story of Fallout 4, I might die. I hear you. It's, I, I also am disappointed in myself. Now, the, uh, I'll tell you what I'm, uh, where I'm at. I have just finished capturing footage for the vast majority of all of the side quests and random quests, uh, not random quests, radiant quests for this particular faction, which took an enormous amount of time due to the nature of these particular radiant quests for this particular faction. Uh, and I have started capturing footage that goes back over the Institute's plot because with all of the other factions, you have to replay the Institute plot which complements that faction's plot. And uh, I'm at, I just finished the battle for Bunker Hill for the faction whose ending I'm currently doing. So I'm making great progress. I've probably got, you know, six or eight more hours of footage to capture. And once that's done, I can start production on this new series. So I am making progress. I am getting there. But there's also a lot of real life stuff that I'm dealing with right now as well that just take up an enormous amount of my time. Uh, so I wish I could say when the next episode is going to come out, but I can't. Instead, I can simply say that it will come out. Real Sus Boy, a member for two months, says, Hey Ox, what was your first job ever? My first job ever was as a chalkboard cleaner at my school. Yes, that's right. The young Oxhorn was pretty entrepreneurial and when I was in early, early middle school is what it was. When I was in early middle school and I wanted to make a few extra bucks, I had an arrangement with my teachers where I would go every Friday into each classroom and clean the chalkboards 
uh, for a dollar. And man, I tell you what, that dollar, that dollar bought me everything. I, I, it was, I, it was a racket. I had it planned out because I knew I, there were like 12 different teachers and I went in at the beginning of the year and I talked to all of them so that I got their contracts. That's right. Contracts. And I went around and by the time I was done every Friday, I was walking away with $12. You know what that is after two weeks? That's right. That's $22. You know what $22 can buy you back in like 1996? Man, you could go to the movies and you could get bubble gum. And I liked going to those, those quarter machines in the grocery store that had the big old stickers. I collected those and they came in the little... Uh, cardboard envelope that would open up and they were kind of chrome and they looked kind of like tattoos but they weren't they were stickers I loved them and I would just I would go to the bank and turn all my bills into quarters so I could go to the get to the grocery store and get those huge rectangular stickers from the vending machine and maybe a little bit of 22 24 did I say 22 <laughs> hey 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 look it's late at night I've been dealing with computer issues and I've been drinking did I I, I meant 24 See, whenever, any time I say 22, it means 24. My 22 is it's 24, folks, is what it is. So 12 plus 12. I mean, math here on Scotch and Smoke Rings. It's an, it's, this, is, this is the content of the future. Anyway, yeah, those stickers, man, the big rectangular stickers. I would buy them with my quarters. Man, cleaning chalkboards. What a racket. This is why I haven't numbered my episodes of Scotch and Smoke Rings, all right? I'm having problems adding 12 to 12. <laughs> <laughs> what do you, I'm gonna, I'm on episode 600 and something. Am I? No, I'm, I'm, I'm on episode like 300 and something. No, it's kind of, it's in the 500s now. I forget. This is why I don't talk numbers live on camera. Nuka Tom says, make numbering the episodes a stream. Oh, wow. That would be scintillating. Maybe on Twitch. Maybe I would do that as a Twitch stream. KT says, depressed because my external hard drive on my PlayStation 4 crashed. Almost two terabytes of years lost. Switching to PC for Starfield anyway. Silver linings, I guess. I'm so sorry to hear that, KT. Um, I don't know how important that data was to you and exactly <clears throat> how your hard drive crashed. But I do know that uh, there are ways to save data. Uh, particularly on um, um, hard drives that haven't been overwritten. Like if, if the data has been deleted or lost in some way, as long as no new data has been written to that hard drive, it can still be accessible depending on the, the software that you use to try and get it back. But that's a huge, huge project and it may not be worth it. Retro Wave says, what do you call two guys that hang on a window? Kurt and Rod. Curtain rod. Curtain rod. Two guys hanging on a window. That's great. Thank you for that one. And then there's Viral Mag Ravager, a member for 10 months, says, Evening Ox and Chat, have you considered playing the monster in a Scotch and Smoke Rings game as in Aliens vs. Predator? And it does work on Windows 10. Oh, I had never considered that. Let's try Aliens v. Predator. Monster, add that. To my list here. Jessica McDonald says, uh, I used to get those rub-on tattoos when I was super little. My dad would put them on my arms for me. Pretty cool. That sounds like a really fond memory. Okay. I think I am finally caught up. So I'm going to put my headphones back on and get back to my cigar. The Easy Life says playing New Vegas for the 100th time. It's crazy how Obsidian cranked out such a masterpiece in under two years. Even with the bugs, glitches, and some cringy dialogue recordings, it's still the best fallout, in my opinion. <clears throat> There are many people that share that opinion in the Easy Life, and for good reason. It's one of the best written fallouts, one of the least predictable fallouts, and uh, it's just a gem. There, it, the two-year runtime, uh, production time, it, it's obvious when you play the game. There are so many pieces of the game that are just empty and devoid of any content and really look unfinished. In particular, uh, a West Side and East Side uh, in New Vegas, the sewers of New Vegas, uh, downtown New Vegas itself, 
ha had to be broken up into like two or three different sections with a bunch of scrap walls because they didn't have time to optimize the creation engine to have such a big loading zone, which is what they were thinking for um, New Vegas. And there were reshoots for dialogue that they had to do. So they were rushed and it shows. It definitely shows there are glitches and problems with it. But where it shines is with the story and the setting and the characters. It's just so well done. Nuka Tom says Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Summer wasn't too bad either. Well, let's just hope that spring and winter go well for Humpty Dumpty as well. Thank you, Nuka Tom. Greg says, so I've watched all of your Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 series, and I've got to ask, from a gameplay standpoint, absent from story, how do the games hold up? Talking strictly absent from story, no one would publish a game like Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 today. Um, the reason that Fallout 1 and, to a greater extent, Fallout 2 were considered to be the masterpieces that they are is, is not only just because of the setting and the music and the story, but the gameplay made it, the way the, the gameplay worked made it feel like a really large and big and wide open world. The overhead camera, the isometric camera angle made it look like you were a small character in a large place. Every city looked a lot larger than it really was uh, just due to the, the camera angle itself. And then navigating the world map, it was just ingenious. You didn't actually have to create this huge world, just get a, you know, a two-dimensional picture cover it in, in a black shadow and then uncover it a little bit as a tiny cursor moves across it and then when you enter a zone just zap into a different it made it feel like it was huge and you were really exploring the west coast of the united states but it was so small so it was innovative but today compared with games of today it probably wouldn't hold up that is to say that if somebody were to make a brand new game imitating the gameplay of Fallout 1 and Fallout 2 exactly, it probably wouldn't do well. Everyone is saying the music stopped. Let me fix that. There we go. Thank you for that one. Man of Warp says, Don't know if you knew, the Brahmins are named after India's priest caste, who are particularly known for their reverence of cows. I did know that. Yeah, that's an interesting tidbit. Uh, thank you, Clell Biggs, for letting me know that the music has stopped. Julian Z says, Ox, thanks for that confirmation as I was playing Survivor and got the blaster stance. I thought, yeah, Ox is probably not going to like this right away. Well, I mean, if you have you specked into it? Is it something I should even bother specking into? What, because one of my frustrations is, in the game there are, there are situations when, when you're fighting really tough enemies one-on-one. -on -one, and the single lightsaber is great for that. It's balanced between defense and offense. But uh, there are moments like uh, in our last broadcast, when I got swarmed by all of those bots, where you're being swarmed by tons of enemies, and really the only solution is the extended lightsaber, because you can ki kill everything around you really quickly. And so when you're fighting, you need an option to quickly choose a move between those two. But if I switch to the blaster stance, I rob myself of crowd control. I rob myself of the ability to very quickly get rid of enemies that are swarming me. Um, so is it worth it? Like, what is the benefit to the blaster stance that I gain by getting rid of, by swapping it out for my extended lightsaber? Or perhaps the explanation, or perhaps the solution is to get rid of the single lightsaber, which I've already specced heavily into, in, uh, in favor of the blaster saber. Hmm, I don't know. At 444 says, it's episode 709. I'm on episode 709? You mean I passed episode 700 and I didn't even realize it? Holy cow. Time flies, Ox, says Snowman 3. Yeah, you're right. There's so much admin that I need to do for my channel that I haven't had a chance to do. 
I need to put the numbers back into all of my episodes of Scotch and Smoke Rings. I need to organize them into playlists, which I haven't done for years. I used to organize them by seasons. I would have season one of Scotch and Smoke Rings, and it would just be like 2014 or 2015. And then my, uh, my YouTube rep keeps on asking me to turn Scotch and Smoke Rings into a podcast on YouTube. Apparently, they've got their own algorithm uh, for for promoting podcasts. And he thinks that Scotch and Smoke Rings would do really well as a YouTube podcast. Well, I haven't done that yet. I would have to go back and organize everything into playlists and then convert the playlist into a podcast. Ah, there's just so much for me to do. Oh, and I'm still trying to make content as well. Hard to do both at the same time. Elena Sherwood on Facebook says, Hello, hello, Ox. Have you heard about the Swedish car company that went bust? It was a real sob story. S-double-A-B, sob. Swedish car company, a sob story. Thank you, Elena Sherwood. Love it. Man of Warp says, In a post-apocalyptic setting, would you kill a Brahmin for a few days' worth of prime ribeye steak, or would you keep it alive for years of milk and fertilizer? Um, I'd keep it alive for years of milk and fertilizer. Well, it depends on how many I had. If I only had one Brahmin, <clears throat> I would keep it alive, because the milk is going to sustain my life far longer than one cow body worth of meat, especially since now that it's dead, I have to deal with spoilage. I've got to worry about how to keep all of that wonderful meat from turning in a post-apocalyptic world with no refrigeration. And plus, grass is free, if there's grass out there, depending on where you're grazing. Random Gray Man says, time to hire an admin. Ugh, somebody, I need to hire like an, a, a moderator, or, I don't know, something like that. I, don't, I just don't like giving up control, that's the problem. That's on me. Jessica says everyone is doing podcasts. Don't do it. Don't be a lamb to everything. Jessica, I'm not suggesting that I'm going to change this show. This show has been this way for over a decade now, right? And it hasn't changed. I'm just talking about how it's organized on YouTube. I could either keep it as standalone videos as it is now or organize it into playlists or organize it into podcasts. It doesn't change the content of the video. It just changes how it's interpreted by the YouTube algorithm. Elena Sherwood says, compliments of my hubby. OG from him. Thanks, Ox. <laughs> You're welcome, Elena. And thanks, Elena's hubby. Kid of Hippies says, how would uh, Scotch and Smoke Rings work as a podcast? Or do they mean just the first hour? I don't know. I've never watched a podcast before. So I'm not sure what they're like. I would probably have to sit down and, and watch a few podcasts to see what they're like before I turned this into a podcast. But I'm assuming that a podcast is just like a radio show, but with video. So you've got guests and you talk to guests and you take calls and you talk to people. I mean, I guess it's like a podcast in that I talk with you. You talk back to me and we're having conversations. It's not like a radio show where I have call-in guests. And it's not really like a podcast where I don't have a person sitting in front of me having an interview. So it is kind of its own weird thing. I'm just talking with you guys. <laughs> I don't have a lot of guests. I used to have guests. Old, old school uh, viewers of Scotch and Smoking, uh, Smoke Rings will remember when my brother was a guest, where some of my childhood friends were guests, where we had visitors. Even one of you was a guest. Remember Greg, uh, Greg Hartung? <clears throat> Greg Hartung was a viewer who, uh, who was in the area, and he came onto the show just for fun. But yeah, I haven't had a guest on the show in a really long time.
I really like this. I really like it. Why do I like it so much? It's almost salty, but it's not salty. It's There's no salt on it. It just, there's something about it. It's salty and woody. And I know that doesn't sound good, but it's good. It's weird. All right, well, that one's a big thumbs up for me. Ranker1138 says, Do you think you'll beat your streaming record with Starfield? I think your current record is still The Witcher 3. I mean, I think my current record is Fallout 76. Day one of streaming Fallout 76, I had tens of thousands of people watching. Uh, I think I think it was it was over 10,000 people. So I'm exaggerating when I say tens of thousands. I, it was almost 20,000. I think my memory is hazy. Don't don't record me on that. I'm not sure. But that was like my biggest live stream. In terms of Starfield, yeah, my, if I get the game early and I'm uh, I don't think I'll ever do as good as I did with my Fallout 76 live stream because that was very specific. It was a brand new Fallout game. I was a Fallout YouTuber. I was live streaming really for the first time. So there was a lot, of, lot going on for the anticipation for that game. Starfield is highly anticipated, but I'm not really known for Starfield content right now. So I don't know. We'll see what happens when the time comes. Dalton Williams says, got to have one male and female to get milk, JS. What? No? What? I don't I don't understand. I don't get it. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, and cows, right. Oh. Right, and cows. Because the the milk cows only get only only produce milk when they're pregnant, right? Which means you have to have a male cow, a bull. Um, yeah, I guess you're right. So I wouldn't be able to get milk from the cow. Well, fertilizer. But the fertilizer would only be useful if I was staying in one place and farming. Hmm. Good point, Dalton Williams. Good point. Nuka Tom says, never going to forget when you had the voice of Joshua Graham on your show. That was such a legendary moment for me. I know. Uh, Keith Scarabaka is an amazing guy. He was so chill and so generous with his time and so kind and was able to answer all of my questions. Like nothing I asked him threw him for a loop. And he had such insight because he's like a pro. Like he's got so many decades of work experience doing this job and working with some of the industry's best. It was just so much fun getting his perspective on everything. That was great. And then Greg says, uh, when Mr. Salt has back pain, who does he go to? He goes to Dr. Pepper. I can understand. If I was Mr. Salt, I'd go to Dr. Pepper, too. All right, let's see what time is it. Oh my God, it's time. Really? Is it already time? Okay. I mean, I guess I had a few minutes of um, technical issues there. But it is time. All right, let me get the chats organized here. Let's fire up the game. And then I'll turn out the lights. Ranker1138 says, I meant total number of streams for a game. Total number of streams for a game. I guess I don't understand. My record for The Witcher 3? Oh, how many times I live-streamed a game. I, I think I beat Witcher 3 with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. 
Because I streamed the snot out of that game until I completely uh, lost interest. Um, I mean, I did a lot of Witcher 3, but I think I, I did more with Assassin's Creed Odyssey. I'm not sure. That's a great question. Possibly, possibly. Ludi Coden says you allegedly killed off your Comcast guy and then your stream died on Star Wars. Any plans on adopting another one? I mean, I didn't, I didn't, I did not kill off a Star Wars, a Comcast guy. That didn't happen. I've, I've never murdered any Comcast people. All right, Ludi, just making the record clear here. That has never actually happened. But if I did, yes, I'd have to adopt another. Just to ensure the continuity of the broadcast. Jay King, a member for 34 months and a Silver Rocks, says, Hey, Oxen fam, it's been a little while. Finally, in the, am able to work mornings instead of nights. Where do fruits go on vacation? Paris. And with that, it's time to play a scary game. Let's continue. Okay. Oh, we gotta do this again. Okay. So we had just slain the big boss lady. And we are now exploring the world after having done so. I think we followed a witch into this room. Strafet Ventar Hedaren Ok Prigol Dorens Rig. I don't know what it means. Okay, now I remember. We had just gone out the door. Okay, we've got some sort of zombie creatures eating corpses. <laughs> so we need to stick to the bushes. We're sticking to the bushes. But how do we get over there? Crap. 
crap, this is a dead end. We've got to go behind that other guy. Unless we do something clever like we have to alert them. Yep, that was it. Ha, we're alive. Well, it's good to know that zombies can't jump. Metalhead Madman says, Heard Red Dead Redemption 1 is being released on PC. You should look into that. I'm excited. If it is released on PC, I will definitely stream it. Oh wow, I can walk really close to them and as long as they don't hear me. Time. Once there was a peaceful village near a great forest. One night, people began to see a beautiful woman with long dark hair lurking in the shadows during the full moon. Oh, that's never a good way to start a story. Men started to follow her into the forest. Some of them never returned, and those who did had lost their minds. <laughs> Eventually, the villagers had enough. They took all the dark-haired women of a certain age and put them on trial for witchcraft. They started to execute them, hoping to find the right one. Yet men kept disappearing during full moon nights. Yikes! The villagers grew more and more desperate and burned down a large area of the forest in the hope of finding this strange, beautiful woman, but to no avail. The villagers had lost themselves. They killed their own mothers and daughters. They burned down more of the forest that had served them with resources. Then one night, when the moon shone at its brightest, Five brave men took matters into their own hands. They put on their coats and walked into the burnt forest to hunt for the woman with the dark hair. I mean, you'd think they would have done that earlier, right? Is it easier to put on coats and go hunting or to murder all of the women in your town and then raise the forest nearby? After a time, they saw the beautiful woman standing in a clearing. The men were instantly enchanted and followed her deep into the forest's heart. Uh -oh. She was a shapeshifter 
that mimicked what men wanted to see in order to lure them away. When they were close enough to touch her, she transformed into something monstrous. I believe this is the creature that we killed in our last video. So did she turn them into the Nazgul? She ripped their chests open, hung them up in the trees, and drew strange powers from their still beating hearts. And no one would ever see them again. She did. Right, so she's the one that we killed in our last episode. So, is it a lighthouse? It's a light or a beacon at the top of a tower on the top of a hill. This isn't the first time we've seen that drawing either. Well, this is a dead end. We've got ticks to get out. And there's a bunch of zombies out there. Fine. Okay. Yeah, there it is again. Outside the door. Dead end. Okay, that's not a body, that's a guy. If I walk, he's gonna jump up and eat me. Jay King says, wanna hear a joke about paper? Never mind, it's terrible. Terror. Terrible joke about paper. I like telling dad jokes, sometimes he laughs. Ha ha ha, thank you, J. King. Okay, now we've got birds in the way. Zombies in the far left, zombies in the mid left, zombies in the far right. We gotta avoid the birds. Okay, I think I see the path. They're turning my camera around so I don't know what I'm walking into. And I'm hesitant to just walk forward. Because there could be zombies there. Alright, there's a graffiti on that. It's... It's a cross? Mrs. and Shubo. Yeah, it's a cross. We're looking for the lighthouse. Okay, well there's no one waiting for us here. Alt Grendel says, and I'm back. A blanket hello to everyone. A blanket hello back at you, Alt Grendel. Thank you so much for coming back. Oh, oh, do I use light or not? Is the light gonna be good or bad? Yeah. 
It's bad. The light is very bad. If I can't see, they can't see. I'm still alive! <laughs> oh! You see that? Oh, there's a person below me! What is she holding? Oh, that's creepy as hell. We've got a lit fire down here. That means there's gonna be light in the room. Oh, this is a safe room. We've got to solve the puzzle. Okay. Plus. Circle. And that's it. All right, we've got a small plus, a large plus, and... Another design on top. A hectogram. Diamond, no. Square, no. Yes. But we're missing crosses. We need two crosses. Big cross. Dots, triangle. We need the big cross. Then we need the small cross. Okay. We've got three dots, a diamond, a triangle, and a square. Circle. Oh my god. Diamond. Square. Triangle. Three dots. There we go. Any more zombies?
What was that? Okay, can't go that way. Oh, I really don't want to go into town. Can't go this way, can I? Okay, we go into town. So I'm gonna hug this wall over here. Bagaregordon. Hey, there's the light. It's the door. This is the room. This has the lighthouse image on it. It's a map of the town. There it is. So the lighthouse is at the end of the town. Where are we? Okay, well, we just... <coughs> Got to na uh, navigate through the town to get to the lighthouse. My face is still covered in blood from that last boss fight. Of course it is, because I haven't washed. <laughs> he just looks like a ghoul. Oh, this poor kid. I just don't want to take any chances, so I'm going super slow. And now, I'm super frustrated. Okay, we got the key. <laughs> oh, for this door, right. Well, what was that for? Okay, it was for jumping on. Chris Tidwell became a Silver Ox. Thank you, Chris Tidwell. Because that door... is locked, so we gotta go over here, I guess? Here we go up. We gotta somehow raise it even more.
Okay. That should be enough. Aha! Jay King says, <clears throat> he's telling us a joke. There are two dads. Dad number one says, hey, bro. Dad number two says, yeah, bro. Dad number one says, could you hand me that pamphlet? And dad number two says, bro, sure. Bro, sure. I'll have a couple more to make up for no Padre. Thank you, Jay King. Where's Padre? I miss him. He showed up for a, a broadcast last week. Haven't seen him since. White Fang says, hope things are going good. Things are going great. Thank you so much. <gasps> All right, I think the zombies are gone. We could climb to the roof or go into this building. Let's see what happens if we go in the building. He scratched a flower on the wall with that knife. Tony J says, sorry to bother you, Oxhorn. I gave you a translation on that sign in the church. I told you. It says, punishments awaits the blasphemer and a flogging the back of the fool. Okay, did I read that last week? Thank you very much, Tony J. Crimson Bolt says, you should check out a game called Dying Light. It's a really good zombie horror game. It has a good story and plenty of lore. I think you'll enjoy it. Thanks, it's on my list. I'll have to check it out. Okay, well, we could make that jump, but let's crawl down here, see what we got. Nothing. Nothing. That's a bit far to jump. But we gotta try it. Oh, and I didn't break a leg. Yay. Another key. <laughs> it's like her hand was stuck on a pencil sharpener. Ubrubber says, uh, can you imagine how bad his later hosen stink? I mean, you're 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 not wrong. They probably do stink, but it's not something I would have been thinking about.
I'm seeing the dot on the other side of the door. That door has two dots, one on the inside, one on the outside, and that's what I'm seeing. Okay, there's the lighthouse symbol. We're going the right way. Oh, dead kid. Another story time. Dear diary, I am so in love with him. I cannot even describe it. It feels like he loves me too. Okay, so could the the dead girl on the ground here who wrote this diary, could she have been in love with the dead guy we found who used a knife to scrawl a flower onto a wall in the last house? Our village still tries to heal its wounds from the dark days. But at least me and my love survived and have each other. After the horrible witch hunt, we thought we were safe. We thought we would have peace. But then the plague came to our village. It feels like the plague is some kind of punishment for our sins. Maybe we deserve this. People say they have seen an old woman with a rake at night. Every house she passes, people inside get sick. I hope she does not come to my house. Every morning someone new has fallen ill, and shortly thereafter they die. We do not even dare to give them a proper funeral. It is horrible. The dead are rising from their graves, <laughs> and they eat the ones left alive. I have locked myself in the house. I got separated from my love. I wish I could be with him. I hope I can meet him in the next life. I'm out of food, and the dead are right outside my door. I miss him so much. Starved to death. I guess he did too. <laughs> Mr. Master Chief says, care to play a kiddie horror game called My Friendly Neighborhood on your next game list? It's a ripoff of Sesame Street, but with Resident Evil vibes? I play right now. A kiddie horror game? I didn't know they made horror games for kids. <laughs> Let me, uh... Make a note to myself, my friendly neighborhood. Survival game. Okay. Well, maybe. I'll check it out. Well, at least they didn't get infected and they don't come back as the rising dead. Great. I hear them, but I can't see them. And there's no tall grass. It's just run time! Okay. There's a ladder over there. Well, I didn't expect that. So many more zombies. All right. Are we safe on this side? I don't know. Do my keys open this door? I have so many keys now. Surely one opens this door.
Uh oh. Do we risk a light? X. Try going upstairs in a second. Let me finish exploring this floor. Can I get in there? Guess not. Oh, great, they messed up the camera angle. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. We get to do this in the dark. Fine. Robert Tabora says, W Ox, what do you think of the Barbie movie? It looks fun. I haven't seen it yet, but it looks like it would be fun. I can't see a thing. I have to go between them? Come on! Can't I get out here? I can't. Oh, thank God. Okay, well, there's a door over there. What's over here? Oh, that's the room I came from. I see. So I can't drop down. Okay, well, I have to see. Okay. It's a big hole in the ground right in front of me. So I can't. Okay, what? I need a crank! Where do I find the crank? Oh, I bet you it's in this room below.
walked right into one. Jay King gifted one Oxhorn membership to the community. Thank you, Jay King, and congratulations to Angry Kitty. Jay King says, my four-year-old son has been taking Spanish lessons for a year, and he can't say the word please. I believe that's... Poor for four. Uh, thank you, Jay King. I think I get it. Oh, did I do it? No, I didn't. Okay, so I need a crank. Oh, great, a well. That'll be terrifying. me out here. Where is the crank? Maybe it's in here? Wow, and I dropped right on top of it. That's the way out. I am not seeing the crank. Trying to see if they were hiding it over here somewhere. No. Nope. Right, I'm gonna lure them away. Okay, so it's not in that room down there. Let's lure this guy down. So it's gotta be in this room down here. 
Now I can interact with this grate. But I think I can only do so on the other side. I don't think it's down there either. All right, I must be missing something. Um, maybe it's outside somewhere? Did I miss it outside? Well, once I go across, I can't get back. Okay. Well, it's not up here either. It's got to be in that room somewhere. stall over here. Alright, I moved her out of the way. And then there's one guy over there. Okay, I think I need to lure them over towards the grate, I guess is what I gotta do, because I think they're standing over it. No, that's this corner explored. All right, I have no idea where to get the crank.
Yeah, see, this is it. I, I need to insert something there. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. It's right here. I made it way harder. Way harder for myself than I needed to. <laughs> Jeez. Oh dear God. Oh, it's just rats. One kilo kilogram. Uh, I'm guessing. Yul? Yul? Like feed or something? in here and there's a dead body maybe Wandering Paladin says, Hey, Oxhorn, Siri kept calling me Shirley. I then realized I left my phone in airplane mode. Airplane mode, the movie, don't call me Shirley. The Raging Krogan says, Look behind your chair, Ox, demon baby is after you. Where? I mean, what are you talking about? There's no demon baby. Come on with that.
this puzzle again, okay. surrounding the city and some guy enthroned in the middle of it. One candle alight. I wonder if that has any significance. Okay, let's try it. to fall. Okay, out we go. Well, there's the lighthouse. Oh, no. Many of these corpses have zombies on them. Right, I'm going to tiptoe through these tulips. walk. I can't do anything. I'm just looking at it. Okay. Just looking at it.
just in the nick of time. Right, well I don't know what that urn was, or what the significance of that was. But we got to the lighthouse. We didn't die. Remember, the entire point of this game was we're trying to find our sister. And this is uh, quite an elaborate way to find our sister. No idea where she even is. We're depending on the prophecy of some strange little girl we found by a river. Hello. Rake. It's the Rake Lady. Is this a new boss fight? Getting an eclipse? Oh, yeah, we are. Well, perfect timing. flame that's not a flame. There we go. kids. I think that's probably the point. Kaleidoscope hallucination. Now we're on the shore. For some reason, how do we get down here? Okay, so that's the light from the lighthouse that apparently we lit with our little stone here. Don't make me walk in the water, please. Greg says, I'm scared, but I'm also laughing. Yeah, me too. All right. Walk in the water. Oh, look, there. Okay. okay, a bunch of wrecked dinghies. Okay, so does the kid know where to go to find sister? Just gonna go deeper in, huh?
Jesse, I gotta find the one that's opening. Jay King says, I don't go to funerals that start before noon. I guess I'm just not a morning person. Oh, thank you for that one. Which one's opening the mouth? That one. Out the stream! Merrily! Merrily! Oh, merrily, merrily, merrily! Life is but a freaking dream, babe! Ah. Oh, with those eyes! Stop looking at me with those eyes! No! Okay. 
What now? Oh, you reverse it. Sneaky. Static makes it hard to see the rats because of all the points of light. Is it? Bro! Oh, thank God. The dream is over. He had overcome the darkness. And arrived at Mount Doom. He had reached the mountain. Craig Euler says his face is clean. You're right. Good catch. He could finally find his sister. Whoa. Okay, well I died once in that one. It's because a face came up from underneath and chomped on me. No! <laughs> the Raging Krogan says Palpatine wants to eat you. Yeah, looked like it. That was one ugly dude in a hood with a rake. of course. Well, what do we do with the river of blood? I don't want to jump in that. I gotta. I can't go to the sides. I'll leave. Oh, we're navigating the river of blood. This is really going to ruin my later hosen. As he reached the summit, Ola felt regret. Okay. Yeah, this is the same place. This is the same tower where we've met our sister. Time and time again. I gotta do it at the right angle. I can get two from that angle. Okay, don't jump on the thorns. 
That would be bad. Instant death if you jump on the thorns. <laughs> As he reached the summit, Ola felt regret. Well, okay. It's probably really obvious. Oh, now I can't move. Okay. I'm stuck. I'm stuck. I'm stuck on a thorn! Whoops! Game glitch! Void Mayonnaise became a bronze ox. Thank you, Void Mayonnaise. Carol Ann says, it's a thorny situation. Mr. Virus says, is this a thorn in your side? Yes. Tony J says, ox is being thorn apart. Oh, this is going to go on forever. I think I need to restart. As he reached the summit, Ola felt regret. <laughs> okay, that gets three of them. Do I have to get all four of them at the same time? Okay, that's one. That's two. That's one. That's two. Okay, I don't understand this. I don't I don't understand what I'm supposed to do. Can't jump on the thorns. My, my, I'm guessing that I have to somehow get all four of them at the same time. But. They're not all four. Okay, so they're, they're all on the screen right now. Okay, that's two. That's no, that's three. But it's that last one over there. I can't get it too. It doesn't turn until I get over here. Maybe it's a combination. Those two? No. Those two.
That's three. Because it's not just the angle, it's also the distance. See, I'm at the right angle for the bottom ones, <clears throat> but um, I'm too far away from it to actually turn it. Now I can do the top one, but now the bottom two. And now I can do the top one. Ox, you hold the light on the flower. I mean, that's what I'm doing. sister from being taken okay uh, uh yeah this is easy we can figure this out yeah i got it the first time look at that regret that he could not stop the woman from drowning her child that's the regret yeah i couldn't stop the mother from drowning her child shapeshifter in the forest. Why is that regret? The shapeshifter in the forest tried to murder me several times. I have no regret for stabbing that lady in the face 101 times like I did. There's no regret there. I hate it when games try to push this weird sort of pacifist morality on you. If someone's trying to kill you, it's okay to defend yourself, even if that means it's their death. Sorry, no regret. stood before him, and he wished he could ask their forgiveness. Oh, forgive me, Mountain, for trying to survive in this nightmare you've made for me. I feel so sad, just trying to live. He had reached the end that Tuva had pointed him towards. Now, entering the halls of the mountain, Ulle was ready to find his sister. I'm ready, but you're gonna throw something at me so that I don't actually find her, aren't you? Yeah, let's ex inspect the mural here. Right, we got a scepter and a sword, very nice, pointing down. Uh, uh, love it. Right, look up. Oh, is there anything up there? No. Can't see anything. Do I click on anything? Is there anything to interact with? Nope, nope, maybe. Okay, well, <laughs> let's look at the eyes. Is the eyes, no. The mouth of the scepter, arms, and sword. No, it's not that. Okay. Uh, I can't back out. Okay, so I gotta, do I turn around? 
Ooh, something's scraping on the ground here. Oh, ah. Well, wait. That wouldn't cause a scrape there on the ground. Unless something was dragged into the room over here. Now I'm covered in blood again. Well, that's right, because I had to wade through all that water. The Raging Krogan says, Ox, there's going to be some music that fits too well. Really? Oh, oh we're back here. Okay, I'm back here at the library. Finally, get this one. Story time. Long ago, there was a peaceful kingdom that lacked an heir to the. It's the same story we read last time we were here. <laughs> Exhausted, bloody. And at his wit's end, King Nils came to a witch's house on the outskirts of his kingdom. Okay, this is new. Uh, so I'm guessing this continues the story that was in that last book that we read last week. <clears throat> There's a maypole over there. Nice. He fell to his knees, begging the witch to help cure his son, and she agreed. The witch explained that the flower held tremendous power that could only very carefully be used for good. The witch instructed he only use a single petal. Using the whole bloom would only invite death. Ah. Ulrich began to recover, but discontent at the royal line had grown in the kingdom following King Nils' bloody campaign. <clears throat> J. King says, if two vegans get in a fight, is it still considered a beef? No, it's considered a tofu. I ate a kid's meal at McDonald's today. <clears throat> His mom seemed, seemed angry. Because we had a kid's meal at McDonald's. His mom seemed angry. I'm done for the night. Live long and prosper, friends. Thank you, J. King. The next day, King Niels found his son dead. And the last light holding his darkness at bay was snuffed out. Yikes! <clears throat> Someone stabbed his son in the heart while he was sleeping? Good grief. Heartbroken, King Nils turned to the bloom which had promised life, and instead saw it as an escape from his suffering. The witch, having come to visit the king and the prince, looked at the nightmarish scene in despair. She raised a mountain on top of King Nils and shackled him using the same bramble that he let loose upon the kingdom. Oh dear. And to this day, the trolls still feed him as punishment for his evil deed. Feed him? What do they feed him? Feed on him or feed him? You're not, not gonna talk to me? Okay. Is this the witch? Many years in the future? Raging Kroger said, 
this game is screwed up. You know all those mothers that killed the kids for power? That power was witchcraft, to become witches. Yet they seem like the victims and good people. <clears throat> was it, though? I, I don't know. I mean, the people that were killed in the town weren't actually witches. Um, they went on a, a witch hunt to kill people because there was some sort of monster in the woods that was luring men to their deaths. And they thought it was witchcraft, but it wasn't. The women in the other town that were murdering all their babies for power, I don't know if those were the same witches that we've stumbled upon in the game, like this good witch that's helping us in the library and the good witch that was in the story. But maybe you're right. Okay, a father and his son. A father and his baby boy. A husband and his wife. A clock missing its hands. A bloody stain on the bed with the goblet that cured the boy. A child's toy horse. A king. I can take the king, but not the child's horse. Uh, no idea what that is supposed to be. A lockpick? What, what is that? A wooden sword. I guess it's like a staff, like a, a wizard staff or something. Very nice. Sitting in the chair. Cool, cool. <laughs> I'm guessing it's an ink pot. An ink pot. Well, there's the stone at the peak of the mountain. We've got two doors. This one has some clothing in it. And now I can't back out. Oh, he's becoming the boy. Why? <laughs> Why would he change into the princess garment? Key to this door, maybe? Right. Can't access that for some reason. Oh, it's one of the hands of the clock. Rotate. Before I rotate it, I need to figure out what time it's supposed to be. Now that I've put the clock back, I can't get through this door. Is that a glitch? Okay, does anything give us a clue? Two. Two. Find another key, another hand. Nothing on the goblet. All right, it's got to be on one of the little things that we can play with on here. Ten. Knife. 
Okay, well, one hand to ten, one hand to two. But we're missing a hand. It's probably in this room. But we can't get in that room. Sathian became a bronze ox. Thank you, Sathian. Right. <clears throat> I'm thinking that there's a glitch because I should be able to open that door. But I can't. So let me restart the checkpoint. Nothing. Okay, um, there's got to be something else that I found that I can use. can't take this knife and use it as a hand. I can't take this. I can only return it. Pine cones. Can I take anything else? I can't. I can take that, but that's just a collectible. Colonel87 says, all jokes aside, you really need to start playing happy games. Play on, sir. I play happy games throughout the week. It's during scotch and smoke rings that I play dark games. Marine98 says, I solved the puzzle. It was the Nordic maid in the library with the candlestick. Well, thank you. Could be the butler, says Marine 98. Okay, maybe I'm supposed to use this in a way that clocks aren't used. Maybe I just use one hand. 10. Two. Okay, two, ten. Okay, maybe it needs to stay on one and then I'm able to open the door. No. Let's try two. Maybe it's because I'm not going clockwise. Okay, ten. Two. We've gone clockwise. Maybe it's like a, a combination lock and I've got to like go all the way around or something. Two. Ten. 
Oh, maybe it's two plus ten. Twelve. Sathian gifted five Oxhorn memberships to the community. Thank you so much, Sathian. The Raging Krogan says counterclockwise, two and ten. Counterclockwise? Okay. I think I tried this, though, didn't I? Two. Ten. Congratulations to the Dark Chlorine, the New Guy 95, Sky Voyager, Shawnee Stacy, and Tara Smith. Okay, maybe I need to go all the way around two. It's like a combination lock. Pass ten once. Ten. They're not giving you any audio cues for this puzzle to help you through it. All right, well, I've tried every suggestion the chat has given me. I tried adding 12, adding them together to create 12. That didn't work. I can't find a second hand, which you'd think it would do. Like, they give you two numbers. A clock has two hands, well, three counting the second hand. So you'd think they'd give you another one, but they don't. So this entire puzzle is just poorly constructed. Wait, there's one other number, says the Raging Krogan. Oh, is there? Okay, well, maybe I missed something. I mean, there's no other number on this. We found one number on the sword and one number on the ink pot. There's nothing there. Let's look at the paintings. Nothing. There's the ink pot. Oh, maybe the paintings are telling us something. Chalice. Ink pot. Sword. That's telling us the order. Chalice, ink pot, sword. Ink pot is two. Sword is ten. What's on the chalice? There's got to be a number on the chalice that I'm just not... Oh my god, it's right there! Six! Six to ten. And we'll try going clockwise first. Six. Two. That was it. I'm just boneheaded. Oh, but still, that door has nothing to do with it. It's this. It's a key. Now I can open the door. Well, now I understand why it's called Bramble and the Mountain King. We're about to find the Mountain King, I think. Oh! 
Oh, oh, don't wake up the goblin guy. All right, looks looks like it's kind of working, but my connection is uh, not quite as strong as it was. But let's see if it's enough to get through. All right, let's see if that's enough. <laughs> okay, I thought I was supposed to jump on that, but apparently not. Got it. <laughs> what did I do wrong there? What did I do wrong there? I got it right in the middle that time. Okay, wait for the middle. What am I doing wrong? What, what am I doing? I did it last time. That's a big door. The gate that was meant to be closed forever, now opened. at the 
top of the pedestal. The mountain king who was meant to be hidden forever was now revealed. Is that him, the big giant guy? <laughs> he just had to reach the sack before Lilimur ended up as the giant's dinner. I guess I don't climb it. I gotta go around. So the controls are a bit janky with this game. And it's because they change camera angle constantly throughout gameplay. So what is up is now down, and what is right is now left 50 different times every hour. That's what I did last time, and instead I flew off to the side. to the sack and they moved it hiding behind a hunk of cheese getting too anxious. Oh! 
Oh, this is a remix of the Hall of the Mountain King. for each one to uh, make this, the fight longer, but that's not working. I gotta be real quick on that. I guess I gotta clear the...
Too late. I don't know how to avoid that one. I still don't know what to do when that one happens. I guess duck? Ducking didn't work. You get behind the big rocks he brings in, says Jack. Oh, I cleared that. Bramble weakened. The Mountain King saw clearly for the first time in centuries. And what he saw reminded him of his beloved son. He would not lose him again. And then he became sick to his stomach and barfed up the girl? This time, King Nils would overcome the darkness. get to Lilimur was now up and in. Up and in, yeah. It's the getting out that I'm concerned with. Getting in is the easy part. Getting out. Well, there are a couple of ways and none of them are pleasant. Okay, we'll do this then. Up, Chuck, you got. Well, that was handy. He is lying in a pool of his own blood. Hey! <laughs> Yay, Sister 
sister's alive. But now brother's dead. Let us be splattered on the ground. <laughs> Why? If this is the end, if they end it here, I'm going to be so pissed off. Give me some sort of resolution. Have the fairy child come in and resurrect her or something. Tuva had one last gift to give there, to Ole. It's the fairy kid, Tuva. There we go, yeah. Resurrect it. Yay! <coughs> Thank you. That's what I needed. Thank you. Because magic. With the Mountain King dead, his prison started to crumble. <laughs> Look after his friend. It's our buddy! Just in the nick of time. But he doesn't have any legs! How's he gonna get out of there? Of course, they don't have to explain that. A troll shows up without an entire torso or legs, and the entire castle is crumbling, but we're saved! He can't walk out or anything. Maybe it's just magic. Maybe he's got troll teleportation. A nightmare woke her up. Frightened by her memories. She searched for her brother's comfort. Oh, great. Don't tell me where he was. He was nowhere to be found. What? <laughs> now the brother is missing? All right, another creepy painting. Delightful. Hey, there's all the figures. Did we get them all? Looks like there might be one or two missing. Got a lot of them, though. Oli and Lilimar. Nine years old and 11 years old. This is the exact same age as my kids, by the way. My daughter is nine, my son is 11. So a little bit reversed, but the exact same age. Don't tell me we gotta go. <laughs> Does, do, do we go through the whole game again? Is this like story plus, but from the girl's perspective now? However, the darkness outside did not scare her. <gasps> Yay! <laughs> he was just... Because she knew she had her brother. He was just outside playing in the dark. All right, kids, go play in the dark. And we did it! we go ladies and gents I'm gonna have to keep this short because I'm running on uh, my mobile connect uh, connection to broadcast right now but we did it we completed Bramble the Mountain King and it's in today's broadcast we understand why it's called the Mountain King because there's a literal king in the mountain and we got to hear the song uh, Hall of the Mountain King with a cool little remix that was fun I uh, love the music love the scenery the theme it just everything that they put in this game was just so well done. I could have done without the dead babies. That was a bit too much. I didn't like how they tried to guilt trip you for living. <laughs> All of these sins that Uli committed, just, you know, killing the demon woman who was after him and being unable to save the mother uh, from murdering her child because those are all his fault, I guess. Aside from that, I'm being nitpicky. It was a super fun story, lots of terrifying 
moments and some challenging gameplay moments as well. The bosses were uh, unique and fun. Never played any bosses like that. So big thumbs up for me. Thoroughly enjoyed it. I hope you guys did too. But with this game done, that means we got to pick a new one for Scotch and Smoke Rings next week. And I'm not sure what to do. Many of you are wanting me to start on Dead Space 3. But there are a plethora of other games like this, little hidden gems that I could play instead. So go ahead and give me your thoughts in the comments section below. Let me know what you would like to see. And I'll consider it. Let's see if there's anything after the credits. Oh, but I can't skip through the credits. So we might not be able to see if there's anything after the credits. <clears throat> Naka Michael says this was a great game, Ox. Thank you, Naka Michael. It was so much fun. <laughs> Laura says there's a thing called survivor's guilt. I gotta know. Oh, uh, well, yeah, maybe there is survivor's guilt. I just don't know if it fits in this one, right? Survivor's guilt is um, when a horrible thing is happening to you and a lot of people around you, and you're the only one to survive. But uh, he actually had to defend himself against this evil. Would you have survivor's guilt after defending yourself from all of this evil? I'm not sure. Maybe. Maybe. I, I haven't lived through that, so I'm not sure um, how the appropriate response would be. So maybe you're right there. Anyway, it looks like that, that's about it, and we can select all of the different chapters in this game to start over if we wanted to. But with that, I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast. Thank you all for joining. Thanks for your wonderful commentary and your con uh, contributions and participation through the chat. Have a wonderful rest of your night, and I'll see you all again very soon with more lore videos and more live streams. Bye-bye now.